In this video we're going to build on from what we designed last week if you looked at part one and we're going to start by 3D printing some of the parts and prototyping some of the shapes and making things work. But first take a moment just to like and subscribe to the channel, thanks. As you can see for most of these parts we're going to use 3D printing and while we're doing the 3D printing, we're going to assess what we could possibly um, CNC cut out wood. I'd like to make it as a hybrid of plastic parts, you know, PLA parts, and wooden parts made on the CNC. If you haven't done so already, it'd be great if you could give us a like on these videos. Um, it takes a little while to put them together. It'd be nice to see if some people actually like them. And it would also be cool if you'd subscribe, I'm trying to build the channel here a little bit and if you could uh, hit that subscribe button i'd appreciate it as you can see here the first thing that i'm printing is the main lifter gear and basically the ball bearing goes into those little slots and then when you rotate it it moves the ball upwards the first thing you have to do with the marble machine is get the ball to move upwards so that it can roll back down of course and you want that to be a continuous thing So going back to the original model, you can see the uh, next gear. Originally, I was going to make this the driver gear, but now I've decided to make that an idler gear. And I'm going to use the back of that, the shaft on the back, to drive uh, hopefully that little um, bucket conveyor belt that we've been talking about. So if I can do that, I will um, use that idler gear as the main drive for that. Generally, what I'm going to do is, is bring a shoot that goes into the lower slot and then turn the gear wheel and that'll raise the ball up to the top slot it should drop out of the top slot and go on to another shoot um, then i'm thinking we're actually been discussing putting a little bucket conveyor in haven't designed that or built that yet but that's something that we're thinking about doing to move it up even higher and then let it come down some shoots and you'll see later on that we've actually um, put together some shoots we've actually got the gear wheels all running we got some shoots to come back down and we're working on different aspects of the design to hold the um, the gear wheels up that there's a front and a back piece the idea is to mount those on some kind of surface and been working on ideas and ways in which we can stand this stuff up and hold it up on a board of some kind on a base um, and make the, the pieces stand up straight so that we can move the ball around. The nice thing about the rapid prototyping, it doesn't take very long to print these individual parts. And once you print it, you can try it out. And if there's something you don't like or you want to improve upon, you can just modify the design and then print it again. Obviously, I'm keeping in mind as I'm making these pieces, how I would do it on the CNC as well, because I actually want to make as much of this on the CNC as I can because it'd be a lot quicker than uh, printing. But the advantage of printing is you just design it and then print it out and it just comes out exactly the way you want it to do without all the setup that you need on the CNC. Another advantage to the 3D printing is I don't have to sit and watch it. I can just set it and forget it. My 3D printers are pretty well set up so that I can literally start the print without even looking at the... 3D printer and I know that it'll print out and I'll end up with the, the part at the end. So as part of the design I needed some spacers, so literally just designed them on Fusion and then print out some spaces. I did look to see if I had some washers that size but I didn't have anything that would fit so the simple solution, print out exactly what I need. Of course to rotate the gears I needed a little handle. So I just quickly designed a handle that'll fit on the end of a shaft. The shaft again is printed with a square end and then just design a little handle that I can push on there so I can actually turn the gear wheels with the little handle. Came out pretty good, it, it works perfectly well. The drive gear has a little key in it so that when I turn that handle, the, the drive gear is keyed to the shaft so that it rotates and doesn't just spin on the shaft. As you probably notice, I'm doing all of this uh, printing with a 25% infill using triangular um, infill so that we've got strength, but uh, it doesn't take a lot of material. So to hold it up for now, I'm doing a simple 
clamp, just two pieces at the moment, just to hold the front and back. And here is that shaft being printed. Printed it um, from obviously the fixed part at the back to the front to the square piece at the front. Another interesting element is a bowl for the ball to drop in. It'll spin around in that bowl and then drop out the bottom. That's going to be uh, one of the pieces where we, we lead into it with a chute. So hopefully we can spin it around the bowl without flipping it out. It's just another fun piece to see what we can do with this ball. I 3D printed the bowl with the widest part down and then just build the dome up. One of the advantages of 3D printing is you can print things that may seem like they shouldn't work. However, when I did that, the inside of the bowl was a bit of a stringy mess, but I just sanded it down and made it so that it worked. No marble machine is going to be complete without some of these open ramps for the ball to roll down. Basically starts at the thin end, rolls down to the open end, drops through, goes down to the next one. You'll see at the end, I'll show you how that works because I actually set it up to do three of those ramps straight off the bat. So on to what we built so far. Now remember this is not a coherent one piece thing at the moment. This is several elements of what's going to be put together. First bit is the gears where we put the ball in turn the handle, rotate it to the top, and watch it fall out. Then that 90 degree ramp, you see how that works. Then here's the bowl. You can see how rough it is on the inside. I actually sandpapered it, but it, it works. It's just not very really good looking. And finally, the three story ramps. You can see I changed the bottom angle so that the bottom one goes much slower than the first two, just for fun. Again, it's a little hard to get everything into a five minute video, but I don't want to go any longer than that because people <laughs> can't keep people's attention much longer than that. Um, as far as the final product is concerned, I'm going to keep building on this and make it into something coherent so that it all moves around. The ball can move from one place to another. If you're interested, please subscribe and I'll get the next video out probably next week and we'll have some uh, interesting bits to add on. Thanks for watching.